woken up. <laughs> we are live. You know we're live. Woohoo! Oh, yes. <laughs> Our parents! How do you know we're live? Because it's Wednesday, and that means <laughs> that it is 3 o'clock somewhere. A lot of somewheres. On that <laughs> particular side of the Atlantic, anyway. <laughs> not really. Not, not, not as many somewheres as... Well, I don't know. How many time zones are in this country? Three, I believe. Four. Four if you count Hawaii, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got... Yeah. East Coast, Pacific, Mountain. You got the three. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's the three continental ones. The and continental Hawaii. ones, and then there's Hawaii. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, beautiful people. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hello. We're definitely getting ready for another <laughs> weekly daily Wednesdays as we do. Um, Hi, Barbara. Good evening. <laughs> let's bring it down to an acceptable level. Uh, we got quite a quite a big show to um, force feed you this afternoon. <laughs> Me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we've it's a little smaller bigger. than the last two. <laughs> but they're juicy topics. There's some juicy topics, that's for sure. <laughs> There's some really nice ones. Yeah. <laughs> and we're going to start off by complaining about something the internet did. Oh, yeah, Central. <laughs> Central is the one I forgot. And blame it all on the one guy. <laughs> right. <laughs> That, that is the tradition of the internet. We have to pick a scapegoat and dump everything on it. Like, ah. See, it. It's one of those things, Patrick, when you're not live on the air, you'd remember it. But when you're live, you don't always remember everything. Oh, Alaska's got, got its own. Other okay. things All right. going on. <laughs> so there's four continental, technically. Yeah, Central. And Hawaii. Central. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, Alaska has a, a different time zone as well because it's can by Canada. <laughs> it's got that big stick it out to the Bering Strait. <laughs> yeah. Did they ever build the bridge across the Bering Strait? No, God, I remember rid of seeing no. that documentary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Build the bridge. <laughs> uh, it was like the um, the big project of bridges. It was one across the Gibraltar Strait from uh, Sevilla to um, Morocco. Uh, the one across the Bering Strait from Alaska to Russia. And uh, the most completely insane one, which was from <laughs> China to Japan. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, that was... <laughs> oh, Arthur and my TwitchCon. I haven't had drink from this one in a while. I figured we got TwitchCon. I love this. This is special. <laughs> TwitchCon 2017. So long ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Back when people could get together. <laughs> hey, man. That, yeah. That... <laughs> yes. <laughs> it is from the long, long ago. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that reminds me, I'm, I'm getting Hollywood. Um, theaters aren't coming back. Like, <laughs> we, we've seen legitimately six months of pushback, 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 pushback. Yeah. It's, it, it's not coming theaters back. Theaters are. Yeah. Yeah. Like, the th Dead. okay, the, the theaters <laughs> have nothing to keep them open, and you're keeping the. What could possibly keep them a little bit open out and you expect the theaters is like hey we're just gonna hang out and wait and it's not gonna work um you, you, you can do what disney out. did and yeah. charge 30 bucks for mulan on disney plus yes that's 30 bucks on top of yep. what you're already <laughs> paying for disney plus yeah <laughs> that's, that's still cheaper than buying a ticket <laughs> and going to a theater yeah and getting you know a drink and popcorn <laughs> I thought movie tickets were stupidly expensive when I was in university. They were like five euros. Mm -hmm. Oh, jeez. Then again, I was in university and massively broke. 
So yeah, no, five euros to see a movie? Whew, no. <laughs> Mandatory home office? Yeah, our Theron's home, stay-at-home orders, I guess. Lockdown! It begins mm -hmm. again. <laughs> here, it's never stopped. <laughs> so, Same. Here in Cali, we have, like, we are the most, yeah, Los Angeles. They were starting we're to relax down. things here, and now is it, nope, back to stage no, four. No, back to, Everyone yeah, I noticed that. stay home. <laughs> I noticed that because I, I watch a lot of the, um, the, um, uh, fair vloggers from England that go to all the fairs and some of them are open and some of them are having to close and it's really interesting <laughs> <laughs> but here they never opened at all so it's like yeah we've been continually at stay at home orders since March pretty much <laughs> and of course as is tradition um well <laughs> yeah. I have to go in the office tomorrow. <laughs> so. <Aww. laughs> Poor Pedro. Oh, what's that? Worker. Everyone else is in lockdown. <laughs> and and are they going to negotiate you getting you know some of that extra money for? No, he's going to do what he's told. <laughs> well, no, because much. government yeah. sometimes. It's not that I'm not looking yeah. for other jobs because I am. Uh, but What's yeah, it like no, working it seems with the like government, like... Pedro. <laughs> then I've been working, working with the government yeah. for over thirty years, so I do know a little bit about that. <laughs> We're not talking about the U.S. government either. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> it, it, it the paycheck is all right. It just seems a little bit unfair that everyone else is getting paid more than we do when we're the ones doing the work necessary to keep them working. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> that's the yeah, bit not... that doesn't sit well with me. <laughs> yeah, that's not right. Yeah, not right at all. But that's typical yeah. of government. <laughs> I'm used to that. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like no one's really hiring at this point, and the people who are are for like stuff abroad. Yeah. So. <laughs> I'm stuck in the same boat and I hate it. <laughs> I, I don't. It's it's hard because I'm used to doing you know being gone all day on Mondays and and then Wednesdays doing a lot of work for school. Um, I'm after LWW, so. Uh. But I had just gone down from full time to part time because I was on sabbatical, which was nice. <laughs> but now I don't have that full time job anymore. So, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I probably am gonna be asked back part time. So at least there's that. <laughs> yeah, a bunch of the schools. My mom, uh, she's a teacher, uh, and she was saying, "Oh yeah, that, that's right, uh, huh?" Bunch of the schools uh -huh. in Portugal reopened. And now they're uh, closing again. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, that was quick, wasn't it? <laughs> Giant meteor, meteor 2020. <laughs> <laughs> I'm absolutely in favor of meteor 2020. <laughs> Stop that recess switch, fam. <laughs> At this point, no, it it's doomed. Just get it over with. <laughs> well, the... You look at the um, silverish lining is what is being clearly demonstrated is uh, getting a lot of people off roads. A lot of jobs don't have to be done in a centralized location that people have to drive to and from and the infrastructure and public transportation on top of that required to shuttle those people. You can do yeah. a lot of stuff from home. Companies have discovered the internet. Oh, yes. they've known about the internet. Well. And now, but, now they understand but. what good upload speed is, so everyone's like moaning about it. <laughs> it it's, uh, we're we're going to see some interesting restructuring probably the next decade because, uh, <laughs> you know, it's always been the argument with middle management. You're sitting there like, no, no, we have to keep everyone organized to make sure they stay on task and do performance. Re that entire job structure is going to be changing um yeah it's gonna be interesting 
Then you have managers like the ones uh, yeah, yeah. at my workplace. It's like, oh, what's that? We're having 10 meetings a yep. week? Because a lot uh, of that going on. Like, got, got, got to I need to justify my, my job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like we get it. We know what we need to do. If you need us to do something else, you ask the person that you want to do that individually. It, it's not difficult. We don't need to spend three hours a day sitting in meetings. Please. But Pedro, if God. you didn't, I wouldn't have anything to do. <laughs> yeah. So. I don't know. I know they were saying, oh, look, we have um, signatures of life, possible life in Venusian clouds and the atmosphere. I don't want to tangle with anything that hangs out in sulfuric acid for fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what's that boiling hot sulfuric acid? Yeah, I'm just going to live here. <laughs> you know, yeah. Uh, uh, up towards the upper exosphere or whatever it is, uh, what, whatever layer on Venus. Yeah, it's very dense, but it's all, it's only like 30, 35 degrees. <laughs> oh, so summer. Okay. Yeah, it, 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 it's a nice, it, it, it's a pleasant, warm sulfuric acid <laughs> spritzing you lovingly. It's room temperature huh? sulfuric yeah, acid. <laughs> nothing too bad. You only feel the burning sensation. You don't really feel the heat. <laughs> Hi, Adam. Hi, Stacy. Good to see you both. <laughs> yeah, you happens. know, it's Steve's work mm. because of his his work is so hands on, and he has to collaborate, you know, directly with people, you know, with, to make the product. Yeah, um, if you're designing had, and creating physical yeah, stuff, it's, it's kind of hard. It's a little more challenging. So, <laughs> but what's really cool? They were really really smart, and they have um, um, they set up a big uh, tented area outside just for their meetings and everything, and they put all the equipment out there they needed. So he said it's actually working out pretty nicely and uh, makes life easier because it's been really hard for him to collaborate with his teammates if they're not in a group, you know, as a team. So it's a little more difficult, but um, they're getting that worked out. So that's cool. So when he goes into the building, you know, there's only like 10 to 20 people. And then all the people yeah. that are working <laughs> at home, you know, can come to the meeting space and see him and, you know, um, he can uh, help the designers with anything they need and and they can help him so like it like it used to be <laughs> so, but they've had to had to make uh, concessions to do something like that because these are artists that have to work together as a team <laughs> and yeah, it's physical again, stuff if, you know <laughs> yeah if you're working on physical stuff on. <laughs> yeah <laughs> which is so why i need to go into out. the office to get laptops sent out to people so they could do exactly. their jobs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> are you usually like the only one there, Pedro? Or are there a couple other people roaming around? Uh, there's other people because we share the building with other NHS trusts. Oh, okay. So <laughs> other trusts have like two or three people in. There's but several NHG, canaries it's usually floating just around, one of right? Us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and except for reception, uh, <laughs> in reception, there's like three people sitting there. It's like, really? The oh, building's oh. empty. Why is there three of you here? <laughs> <laughs> I guess they're getting a lot more calls from the people working at home. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right, we're about 3.15, so I'll grab some liquid to drink and uh, we'll get underway. Okay. Yes. Yeah, no, um, the uh, chatbot does not like emoji. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sometimes if it's like the um, like custom emoji that Discord does that Twitch al also technically supports, it can translate between the two. But, the but IRC is, is all harder. Unicode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so chatbot just goes, oh, that's Unicode. That's going to be a special character, and we're not going to pass that through. <laughs> yes, you can spam us with mumbo jumbo. Uh, been playing recently. Uh... Soapbox Race World. <laughs> oh, I played Proteus yesterday on stream. <laughs> Arthurin was there. Jill was there. Yes. Ven that was, was there fun. too. 
<laughs> everyone was there because everyone's like, oh, that's a new game. All right, let's see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm sure on um, IRC side that looked nasty. <laughs> Mirror was also there. Okay. <laughs> XMPP. Mm. That might be uh, doing some proper uh, Discord emoji stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, Proteus looks fun. The blood is a little bit excessive. But... It is. <laughs> That's the first thing I know. <laughs> 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 I'm like, this is more than blood is spread out more than doom. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it, it travels further. <laughs> it, 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 it's just a gush. You kill an enemy, it's like... Phew. Oh. <laughs> Daisy's like, no, it isn't. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it uh, th that is the single most satisfying pistol to use in a video game that I can think of. <laughs> Shotgun was also pretty good, yes. <laughs> but yeah, the the charge shots uh, of the right click are so not worth it. They're really not. <laughs> mm. And oh shit, yes, it's over. We're done. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you made it just in time, Inertia. <laughs> Mm -hmm. do, 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 do. That's the end of that then. And a one. Of the beer. Mm. Aw. <laughs> it may have become more contagious and mutated. <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> it is a virus. <laughs> For that is what they do. <laughs> All right. Um What's going on now? Oh. That's infinitely less frightening than I thought it was going to be. Mm. And recording. Good to go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's do this okay. thing. Okay. Wrong show. Right show. <laughs> Oh, can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit more red. Do you know? <laughs> it, it gets uh, very interesting and dangerous when, like, the show numbers are four, two, three, and two, mm -hmm. three, four. I'm like, ah. Uh, yes. How's that number of dyslexia working out for you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> And welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, Yay, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun <laughs> things going on in the world of Linux. I'm Ben Stone, joined every week um, by Jill Bryant and Space LA, and all the way, <laughs> not staying up past his bedtime, because we do the show a little earlier, that's one Pedro Mateus, <laughs> Isles of Britannia, and everyone watching <laughs> us at home. How's it going? Uh, it's been another interesting 
interesting stay at home week, I think, for everyone. But, uh, man, I, I had to put the kibosh on it. I felt myself out in the shop the other day. It was like I was cleaning up my etchant tank. It's like, no, I don't need to make a new circuit board, but I kind of really want to. I, I want to make like a Neve style preamp or a microphone. Mm. No, 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 no. <laughs> Being a, this is what happens when I'm at home too much or trebuchet. I don't know. I, I've decided to Yay. not do that. <laughs> you should totally swing something onto your neighbor's lawn. Yeah. You can end that with again. <laughs> you can. Um, check this out. I, I've i put this off because I've been looking around. I've, I've patiently been waiting for a year. I'm like, okay, well, we have that new high quality camera pie. 12 megapixel with the telephoto lens and all that. Thing. Somebody can do a decent comparison video of one of these. Nay, I went and checked like two days ago. It still doesn't exist. Like, here's the video compared to a C920 webcam from six years ago. That doesn't tell me anything. I want to know how it stacks up against my $100 Nikon D3400. Mm. We're going to find out. So I've ordered that kit along with the Raspberry Pi Zero W. Because I want to see if I can make it a wireless IP camera on top of everything else. So, kind of looking um, forward to playing with that and uh, get a nice little video out of. Uh, can I just like make a good webcam out of that, or can we make a streaming webcam? And what the quality is really like? I, I don't know. I don't have much in the way of faith of it being better in low light, like at the mm. studio. But hey, I need that question answered. No one's going to do it for me. That's, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How about you, Pedro? What are you up to, man? Uh, over here, there's uh, nothing much going on except a lot of waiting because I did put some orders in, but uh, they all seem to be on the very, very slow boat from China. So I'm waiting. That that That's what I'm doing. How about you, Jill? What are you doing? Aww. Well, <laughs> Jill's doing was... the same thing I am. Waiting on what? <laughs> uh, <laughs> waiting, waiting on the... Raspberry Pi case for... There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I know you like being terribly mysterious, Pedro, but I thought I'd... <laughs> no, I'm not waiting for the 3070. That's... Well, part of me technically is, uh, mostly because I'm curious to see just how well it will perform, but... I'm not paying $500 for a video card or 500 pounds, as would be the case around here. Mm -hmm. So, mm, no. Mm -mm. Ah. <laughs> well, I've been also um, upgrading. I have an older Core i5 gaming rig that I use by my tech bench. And since uh, DDR3 RAM is so cheap, <laughs> I just put 32 megs in it, uh, gigs in it, uh, RAM, and uh, another terabyte SSD and made it a, a happy little zippy computer. It's got an older 1050 Ti in it, but it runs beautifully. So. <laughs> A couple of more years, you can call it vintage, right? Yes. Well, here, here's the funny thing about it. One reason I started this upgrade process is, of course, the BIOS battery was dying. I'm like, okay, time to do an upgrade. And if I can keep this the motherboard going, um, then uh, and the BIOS upgrade uh, worked because occasionally, sometimes they don't <laughs> if they get fried a little bit. Um, but this one uh, worked just fine. So I decided, okay, I'll upgrade it for inexpensively. <laughs> mm. So and this week, we're going to start <laughs> off with something that made dozens of um, developers very happy, including our own uh, Mathieu Commandon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it hit Lutris. Uh, yes. So basically every year there's a uh, Hacktoberfest. Uh, if you've participated, chances are you probably have a t-shirt to prove it, because that's one thing that they do. Uh, they give out t-shirts, uh, they'll Pedro. pick out... People would not do silly stuff for a t-shirt. If you... Well, <laughs> you haven't been to a concert recently, but uh, you've probably been to concerts. <laughs> when the t-shirt gun comes out and people will straight up punch each other. Yeah. So this is basically the 2020 equivalent of that. And uh, they're blaming it all on the one person because there was a uh, Indian YouTuber that created a video to show just how easy it was to create a pull request. Uh, ch uh, improve the documentation, change uh, 
a couple of lines here, maybe add commentary to the code to document how it's being done. All of that really nice stuff. And people uh, decided to take his examples uh, because he only did that on um, projects that weren't active uh, or that hadn't had a commit in several months. Uh, so he just made like simple edits like a comment here maybe improve the documentation by just writing a single line and people decided to take that as an example well some people did and mm -hmm. um well a lot of uh, other developers went on twitter it's like no it's a uh, pull request spam it's it, it, there's nothing here it's just literally the one line or they just add something to a line to there's the one line of comments in the readme that says moderation that settings has, interactions <laughs> limit yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah the only <laughs> hub, of course <laughs> since this went public they had to do something about it but this is the whole thing man um to this uh all, from joel.net all this would be in our show notes is you're, you're not helping things here. you're trying to single out one guy and mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. infinitely less cool than you know him like hey this is how this is an easy way to get points to get you for t-shirt simply because uh Hacktoberfest has been going on since like 2012 or 2013. This is not new. This, this mm -hmm. is like a yearly thing. But I'm not going to say problem solved now, but I, de I definitely saw people complain. It's like, oh, I'm going to have to go back and clean up all these junk PRs because it was a free t-shirt. And yes, I was being facetious. People do dumb things for free stuff because <laughs> they live in this reality where their time is cheap and free or whatever, man. So they will spend time doing stuff like that to get uh five cent t-shirt don't do that kids uh make meaningful meaningful pull request and uh i'm gonna mm -hmm. say good on github for finally throwing a tool in there to uh finally yeah <laughs> it shouldn't have came to that yeah and DigitalOcean also responded by saying that at hacktoberfest 2020 is officially opt-in only for projects and maintainers so well, they very are, good. Uh, yeah, very good. <laughs> they are protecting <laughs> <laughs> themselves. <laughs> yeah, so, no, yeah. <laughs> that's one of the things because you really want to. Uh, it's one of the things that open source projects need is good documentation. So if you are going to do something to try and get a T-shirt, by all means, improve a uh, a project's documentation because chances are they need your help to do that. Mm -hmm. Just don't spam them. Don't do that. Yeah. No, because you're going to be too busy downloading the latest Ubuntu 2010 beta. Ooh. Yeah, so this is really <laughs> cool. So yeah, so Ubuntu 2010 beta, the precursor to Groovy Gorilla, the stable, which will be available later this month, is now available to download and test. So you can go, uh, go and download the ISO and file bug reports and do lots of testing. And there's been a lot of improvements um, with Ubuntu 2010, including it comes with GNOME 3.38. And what's what I was really happy with, one of the big things, is that you can now rearrange app icons in the applications grid by using a drag and drop the mouse. And that's going to be really helpful. That's been one of my complaints with uh, GNOME. GNOME. And now there is a restart option in the main system menu, which is really convenient. And you no longer have to use the tweaks tool uh, to enable battery percentage from the settings app. That's very, very, uh, very nice, especially for those that those of us who love to use laptops. <laughs> so there's lots of really cool things coming. Um, you know, it ships with the new XFAT drivers. Um, connectivity for Thunderbolt 4 on ARM devices, and there, there's uh, a it whole, whole lot of updates. integrates uh, with AD uh, if you have a Windows environment, say, at work, and you're setting up um, Ubuntu for someone who had that specific request. Yeah. Uh, it integrates directly with AD instead of you having to do the OEM install, setting it up with LDAP, and then just imaging after the OEM install is done. It that's actually mildly useful. Uh, the one thing is basically everything that Jill said, it's, uh, that reads like a checklist of stuff that GNOME 2 did, that GNOME 3 still doesn't. <laughs> 
So, yes. yeah. <laughs> My big True takeaway that, from this Pedro, is that. if you like <laughs> testing stuff, you're probably well aware. But if you're not, this is going to be shipping with kernel 5.8. So if you have anything that rhymes with black magic in your system that uses those evil, big, stinky, mean, mean, poo-poo head uh, kernel <laughs> blobs, it's not going to work with 5.8 because black magic is going to black magic. <laughs> Proprietary, baby. <laughs> Proprietary. 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 <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so, um, but all, all of that is nonsense because there's not a new release wallpaper, therefore I don't like any of it. Oh, <laughs> Not yet, anyway. They will have one Just ready for yeah, sure. <laughs> actual release. No, can't, can't, can't be bothered. No, no new wallpaper. Ah, it's a critical part. <laughs> I mean, release is coming. This is October already, so... You think chop, I'm chop, joking, yes. but that was legitimately brought up in the OMG, my Bundu article. I'm... Okay. Yes, uh, it was, actually. I, I never yeah. scrolled to the comments. <laughs> in the article page, no, did I say comments? No, it was actually in the article on the, on the oh. bottom. <laughs> I just kind of stopped reading at the AD integration. It's like, all, all right, right, cool. <laughs> well, let's talk about Linux Mint. Yeah, yes. so Linux Mint 20.1 Ulyssa is planned to arrive just before Christmas. And the big deal here is now the Chromium web browser will now be packaged through the official Mint repositories. And, you know, um, as a lot of you know out there, um, Clem, the, the head developer of Linux Mint, had removed the ability to install snaps, which removed the ability to install Chromium through the snaps because they were only available. It was only available through the snaps unless you wanted to go through quite a bit of work to install the Debian package. <laughs> so now Chromium, you can get it, which will be really, really awesome. And uh, yeah, so in a 20.1 also includes the web app manager called ICE, which can turn a website into a standalone desktop application. And uh, that's that's been av available for a while as a Debian package. And uh, uh, Pedro was remembering that it was it was uh, the selling point for Peppermint OS back yeah, in twenty fifteen. Since twenty fifteen, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so and it was funny because uh, in the article that um, that I originally read, it, it had said this was a, a new app for <laughs> you know, but it's new to Linux Mint, but it wasn't a new app. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that was the, like the big thing with Peppermint is, ooh, look at all these applications that we include. No, no, those yeah. are just web app um, windows. The same ones that you can create in Chrome. If you like create a shortcut to a specific bookmark, you can right click and open in its own window and even set like desktop and menu shortcuts for it. This allows you to do, do that, be it in Firefox, Basically, whatever browser you have installed, you can use that as a base to run a specific site in its own self-contained window. DIY Electron. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. And that was what I wasn't happy about. You can use Firefox so you don't have to Electron yep. wrap all the things with Chrome or Chromium. I don't know. Every <laughs> so. time I hear all you know, the hubbub about Chromium and a snap and not a snap, and oh, I, it's at Simpsons with the two monkeys fighting with a knife. And I'm like, oh, how do I install Chromium on Debian? Oh, uh get install cro yes. oh, look all right i'm done but <laughs> hey one thing in uh there was a regression in ubuntu 2004 with a uh, usb printer support that was a thing that happened and yeah it's in the article page where you should start reading it um <laughs> <laughs> it boiled down to lpp usb xd and you know it's the implementation mm. of the ipp over usb standard they've sorted that regression if you run into it uh this is uh, should help sort that but I bring that up because I know there's three, possibly seven people left on the planet that have a printer at home. <laughs> yes. That's not in a closet with a dried out ink cartridge and or toner. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's where most a of them are right now. dried out ink cartridge. Yes. <laughs> so a tool I use each and every time we stream is XD. Oh, tool. I call it X dude just because I like, you know, <laughs> it sounds better when you call it X dude. X dude. It would have been easier to type that out uh, if you're trying to call it to do something on the spot. X dude. Also, would you have can been straight so up do an easier. app search for X dude and it'll find it. Um. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, that's pretty funny. I like that they <laughs> compensate for uh, laptops that repeat uh, or uh, keyboards that repeat a little but too fast. But to my point, I use it to control the uh, Stream Deck because I use it to, it queries all the windows and I'm like, all right, look for this text pattern. Okay, you find that text pattern, then I need you to input on, you know, focus this application and feed this input into it, which is key combination, which, you know, with OBS. And um, that's what I use it for. Apparently that's too mainstream, man. Mm -hmm. That yeah. is possibly what it was originally intended for, but no. Uh, Eki Petrady uh, decided, you know what? I'm just going to use XDO tool as a tiling window solution. Uh, he had tried uh, a lot of different... Um, I like that this guy's got real problems. I recently yeah. bought a 49-inch <laughs> monitor with five cameras. So it's like, oh, That's not first world problems. That's like 1% problems. But uh, the, well, basically, <laughs> with that big a monitor and that much real estate, he was trying to find a way to make the most use of it. And he... Um, well, he couldn't find uh, any DE that uh, satisfied his needs uh, when it came to, like, putting windows side by side to occupy as much space at the monitor as possible and have the thing that is working on, uh, say if it's working on something specific, it would take, like, double space in the middle and have two windows down the sides. Or, if he was doing multiple things at once, just have, like, four windows side by side or five windows side by side, whatever the case may be. But... None of the desktop environments and tiling window managers uh, let him do that. You could do like the control meta right right to push a window to the edge or control meta left to push it to the other edge. That kind of key combinations. Uh, he just wasn't getting along with it. So he wrote a couple of uh, XDO tool scripts, uh, assigned the keyboard shortcuts that he did want to use with them, and boom. There we go. <laughs> it's yeah, very anticlimactic I, uh, because I get down to the bottom and I'm like, yeah, what that, <laughs> that picture is. Uh, whoops. <laughs> yeah. But hey, thanks for reading. I, hmm. Pedro, what do you think about this? Because every time, every time you, you go on about, ah, oh, Katie is so unstable and I hate it and I can't stand it. But I'm like, why don't you leave Katie? He's like, then then you, you, you turn into a bill blow. I'm like <laughs> because <laughs> because it has a lot of functionality already built in like this functionality that he's after is actually uh, built into KDE you can set it uh, you can set windows wherever you want on screen with just key combos mm -hmm. and uh, that's one of the things one of the XDO tool scripts that I had a while back while I was using mate or any time before that was uh, the ability to switch uh, windows from one monitor to the other while retaining the exact same size and being in the same relative uh coordinates from one monitor to the other kd so, does that out of the box so. <laughs> what, what if i just put my windows where i wanted them and um never cut my computer off <laughs> well hi I jordan how you doing <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can do that. <laughs> it's, it's 2020, Pedro. Hibernation exists. <laughs> it's only your electricity bill, right? <laughs> what, with hibernation? Oh, hibernation. Okay. What What did you uh, think I said? <laughs> I, I didn't. <laughs> you're like a ninja when it comes to paying attention. You're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> You were you started talking, so I immediately checked out and started looking at Discord. Is Pedro done? I just hear a buzzing noise sometimes. Um, <laughs> all right, that's the thing. That's pretty neat, and uh, I, I like weird stuff like that. I, I'm a huge fan of making things do something that maybe they weren't necessarily intended to. So good on that. New pipe. What awesome. is it? Well, new pipe is uh, an Android. Is it pipe app. wire, but newer? <laughs> no. <laughs> this one is very much Android focused, and um, what it does, it's a unified player. Basically, if you want to play local videos, if you want to play YouTube videos, if you want to play videos from a bunch of other video streaming websites, you can. And one of the big selling points um, 
that it had um, before then was the ability to have playlists and the ability to, uh, say, carry those playlists from uh, one type of player like the full screen player or just a regular player like you're seeing on screen or even the little floating player like if you pay for YouTube Red or you use YouTube Vanced like everyone else. But uh, <laughs> it's uh, they have a new version out because the code base previously, uh, each of those individual players had its own code base and they had to create and replicate the playlist for for each individual one and it sometimes it would just oh uh you have this playlist okay so it would start you from the start of the playlist rather than from where you were watching so that was kind of a big no-no and i could see that it's like you're five videos in, like 20 minute videos in, and all of a sudden your playlist goes back to the beginning. No, mm. no, that's not, no. <laughs> so where do I get a copy of this, man? You guys just head over to the Play Store and pick it up? Uh, not right, not yet. What not do I gotta right do? Do I, do I gotta hack like, uh, <laughs> Have like four Linux to get it. <laughs> well, I was notified through F Droid, so uh, a couple yes, days ago. F Droid, or you could sideload the uh, APK, APK yourself yeah. if directly you know from the to, GitHub to release page. Um, yeah. That's kind of interesting. I do. I have the one question. Uh, maybe you covered it. Uh, does this block ads? Because that's the only thing I want. Yes. Yes, it doesn't it even block zags. <laughs> doesn't even load them, and I was also very impressed that it has uh, it searches PeerTube as well as SoundCloud. Al although, be it beta, it it does do those searches pretty well, and that's that's really cool to have a player that searches all the different uh, Libra video sites and and audio sites. Full <laughs> disclaimer: I <laughs> give my pound of flesh directly to YouTube because. Here's the thing, even with like YouTube advanced, which I, this, this I think is a, if you're going for that, you know, if you're a privacy hobbyist, I'm like, I don't want mm -hmm. anything to, which is great. That's great, man. I don't judge anybody's hobbies, but just like YouTube advanced, Googs can flip one little bite and it's all gone. Yeah. Period. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So yeah. that's why All I don't I invest to do too heavily in that, which I, I I love seeing stuff like this. I just don't get too attached to it. And yeah. um, it's not like I'm not already giving Google money. So <laughs> yeah, they have to constantly <laughs> update their Google API. <laughs> yeah, it's and a in, API. in all fairness, Google will definitely break their own product sometimes too. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. It is nice you can download with this with this app, which is nice, uh, you know, without having to use another website or plugins, which mm -hmm. is really cool. Really shady websites like Android yes. um, <laughs> is off to do. Yes. <laughs> I will say if you need to download a YouTube video, if you're doing it on mobile, you get other problems. 4K video downloader for the average person at home. There's a Linux client. Why do I know about it? Cause uh -huh. yes. that's to download my own YouTube videos when deal. I need it. Um, because <laughs> as a YouTube creator, we can download the uh, 30 FPS version, which is a lower quality than what is available. So yeah, mm -hmm. got to take care of that. Hey, let's talk about this, darling. Mm -hmm. What's darling, Pedro? Is that just a word oh. to you? Are you calling me <laughs> darling? Has, has Nori ever called you darling? Um, darling? When she's being sarcastic. I was about to say outside of just being patronizing. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, uh, sarcastic Nori calls me darling all the time. <laughs> Walks over there and she takes away your safety scissors. She's like, go back in the room. <laughs> what it is, darling, is a translation. Translation English, jeez. Um, layer that lets you run get this mac os software on linux it's fast Yay. it's free it's compatible and it has a check mark next to easy to use so you know it's going to be an adventure kids more importantly it is native they say we aim to fully integrate apps running under darling into the linux desktop experience by making them look feel and behave just like native linux apps does it support gui apps finn i know you're asking me that <laughs> uh, almost Almost Stick there. with me. <laughs> Solid no on that one. Yeah, <laughs> almost sounds better than no. Uh, not yet. There, there is basic experimental support for running in the emphasis simple graphical applications. But uh, yeah, that's going to take some work, man. Uh, does the name Darling mean anything, Pedro? 
<laughs> yes. It is, yeah, it is a combination of uh, Darwin and Linux, which uh, should not have been Darlinks. Uh, Darlinks? Uh, yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a Pokemon Shagda Transformer. Yeah, uh, I remember, I can't remember who it was that posted it on uh, Discord, but Jordan was saying, oh, is that still being actively supported? And that's stuck out in my mind. So I went to their uh, GitHub repo. It's like, oh, okay. Commit was like 20 days ago. Very good. That's very promising. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I knew this project was around for a while, but it's nice to see, you know, getting uh, commits. And yeah. And it, you know, what is it is cool. It is actually trying to be the what what Windows is to wine on Linux. Um, it's trying to be that for Mac OS, which is really cool. We need something like that, <laughs> very badly, <laughs> actually. And when we we have GUI app support, that'll be even better. I mean, now is the time to be working on it because uh, there's going yeah. to be a lot of breakage, whether or not uh, Apple decides to move ahead with the the move to ARM now that Nvidia owns them. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, no, uh, catering to those, uh, poor lost, uh, money filled, mm -hmm. uh, Mac OS users, probably not a terrible idea. You do not yeah. understand how strong the reality distortion field is, Pedro. <laughs> Moving to ARM and losing all of my existing software and plugins is for my own good. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> I will break free of these x86 chains. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> Shut up, you're hating. <laughs> this is kind of neat. I definitely look at something like this uh, from through the lens of like, uh, like the AAX plugins and a lot of audio stuff that's sitting over on Mac that's going to go bleh, and die. Be able to bring a lot of that stuff over to Linux, maybe eventually, who knows? But I thought I'd give everyone a little heads up that it does exist. But speaking of audio, real quick. There's a deal on the internet for a copy of Harrison Mix Bus. This is like the uh, closed source evil proprietary version of Poo Door. Proprietary? Yeah. <laughs> proprietary. Uh, lowest price ever that you can pick it up $19. No referral link. Go Google it or it'll be in the show notes. It's normally 89 wet stinky caches. And you're like, hey, man, that, that looks kind of familiar. That's because it's from the creator of Adore. He's uh, done most of the code for it, and it's pretty decent. I mean, if you're looking for, uh, I'm just going to say, if you plan on doing any work in the uh, digital audio and you want a full featured version, the whole point of Mixbus mm -hmm. is to give the digital more of an analog feel. Like you're probably familiar with like the Mixbus 32C consoles and stuff like that from years ago. Well, this aims to emulate it. Comes with a gang of plugins. Look at all those buttons, Jill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, we had some Harrison equipment at the radio station years ago at the college that I worked at. <laughs> so you can get your antique vintage on, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. On your touch screen. <laughs> mm, I don't think it's available. Well, no. Just don't touch monitors, kids. Uh <laughs> I don't care, man. Like I, it, I will slap your hand like you were a child, and I do not care how old you are. But and this has taken place multiple times in my house when somebody starts, like, <laughs> mm. oh, it's there. Yeah, <laughs> and they, they will look at you like a surprised child, and like, yes, yeah, act like a surprised child. They'll treat you like one. Do not touch monitors. <laughs> so, oh boy, that's the thing. <laughs> Get it if you want it. Uh, it's normally like ninety bucks. Um, I already had a copy. I already paid for That's my copy nice. of Odor. On top of that, but I suppose we should say that uh, we are not being sponsored by. Literally, the Harrison first thing consoles. I said when I started this, <laughs> Pedro, you are batting a thousand tonight, baby. I'm half asleep. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's I'm, two of us. <laughs> I'm glad Nori took the safety scissors from you. For your own good. Oh. <laughs> she left the soldering iron, though. <laughs> yeah, she can dream too. I mean, <laughs> beautiful people. If you like what we do and you want to become part of it, can I join our little team? The easiest way to support us is to head over to patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. That's where we hang out. We got a bunch of cool rewards. We got extra shows, access to the Discord, and come party with us and say hello. We have 108. 
beautiful party patrons. We have some people we need to thank this week. Um, we got a new vigilant um, Viking is one of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank vigilant you, Viking vigilant is a Viking. new patron. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> and for some reason, uh, Ven took his name out in the notes. <laughs> Don't know why. <laughs> Because I had to add him to the credits as a new advisor. <laughs> oh, it was a cut instead of a copy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's why. Okay, that's funny. <laughs> and, and yeah, I'd like to thank also um, M. Fox Dog for gifting me the game Who's Your Daddy on Steam. I'm looking forward to playing it. I haven't yet, but looking forward to playing that. You like get another fun. copy and you and Steve can play it. Yes, we can actually. That would be and you a can good swap game. daddies. <laughs> yes. Daddy swapping is allowed. Aww. That's the thing. Uh, thanks. Uh, get your name and credits and all that. We want to thank everybody who currently support us and continue to do so. Despite our be best efforts to try to derail the train, it keeps on going down the tracks. <laughs> That's pretty interesting. <laughs> it, come on, just. just uh, just a little more attention, Pedro. You, you can do it. Don't don't start licking the microphone just yet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> See, I tried to avoid the sound effects. Nori, Nori, you only <laughs> one. You should have been in with the arm, arm's reach of that one. <laughs> that should have been a chipped tooth. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I think the arm would have just given way long before I chipped my tooth. <laughs> Listen, I, I'm seeing a wall police kick on the other side of that microphone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I'm not dating Nori. I'm dating Chuck Nori. Okay. Listen, I just need Nori to <laughs> extend her leg. I can apply the um, <laughs> vertical force needed to... Uh, Oh boy. 3.14 <laughs> slice of pie time, and we got to talk about everyone's favorite company. Oh man, something Yay. one company <laughs> Linux can't get enough of. NVIDIA, baby. <laughs> you know it, man. Everybody who runs Linux for like two weeks and gets on the bandwagon of like, NVIDIA's bad, right? Internet? And, and, okay, whatever. Uh, they get a new Jetson out, the Nano 2 Gig. Two gigajoules, this developer kit. What's a big deal? You're like, yeah, Ben, it's been around for a long time. True. True. Well, this version's half off. Well, you got half the ramp. But hey, man, mm -hmm. if you've been looking to get started with your NVIDIA based uh, Jets of Data, because what's well, regular price? Like 100 bucks, man. I'm mm -hmm. guessing these are going to be better for training our fair and just robotic overlords. I will use this in the court as exhibit uh -huh. A uh, after the singularity. <laughs> But what do you get? You get the two gig, which is, I mean, 64 bit quad core ARM A57. You got a processor, 1.43 gigajoules, 128 core NVIDIA Maxwell. So two gigs of DDR RAM on that. Couple of concessions you got to make. Uh, it has slightly fewer USB 3 holes. And I don't know if it's a bad thing or a good thing. Everything's going to it. It now has USB C charging. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, I looked at that and I'm like, oh man, I can't believe it. I'm such an NVIDIA fanboy. I went right out and I, I ordered Raspberry Pi. So. <laughs> <laughs> you also ordered the yeah. cheapest Raspberry Pi. Oh. No, incorrect. <laughs> that would be the non wireless. Oh, yeah, no. yeah. 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 <laughs> the non wireless is yeah. just the $5. It's yeah. The yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is cool because it hits that sweet spot of, of you know, close to the Raspberry Pi. It comes in at $59 which is actually um, lower than the Raspberry Pi 4 8 gig version, which, which is set priced at 75, and even lower than the Raspberry Pi 4 4 gig version at $59.99. So it's 99 cents lower. Than <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think this is a, somebody, a really good for them. Somebody will use so. that in an argument, I guarantee you. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Then again, the four gigabyte Raspberry Pi four is very nice. Yes. It probably <laughs> won't do quite as much, graphically speaking, as the Nano on accounts of the uh, the Pat not Pascal. Maxwell. Maxwell, of course. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, 
Well, I mean, you nice. can look at it like this. I mean, it doesn't have like compute units. It's like dedicated. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. I, again, this is not. I, I don't, want the RTX Nano. Is what I'm saying. Okay. It, all I'm saying is, if you're buying a Jetset Nano, Mini Nano, Micro Nano, Super Nano, don't buy it for desktop replacement. That is not what this thing is designed yeah. for. <laughs> buy a Raspberry Pi Zero for that. <laughs> Yeah, you know, so this, hey, this you're is going to get that video from me. I got I to make my money back from buying the camera stuff. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> but yeah, it was obvious that, that NVIDIA was aiming at the Raspberry Pi market with this pricing. So, And, and they even call it the educational education for education projects. They want to get so. it in schools, which I think is good. Yeah. Because awesome. um, if you're going to be getting for into the AI workforce, and- it doesn't matter what soulless corporation that you shill for. <laughs> You're going to be dealing with yeah. your com- compute. And it's going to be CUDA in video one. So, yeah, that's a cheap way yeah. to get learned about it. Now, e ink has been yes. promising, promising us this future that is just 10 more years away that we'll have some, but that was 20 years ago. But we do have e ink that kind of works now, though, right? Yeah, we do. This is beautiful. This is a Raspberry Pi e ink dashboard written in Python 3.7. So it's easy to edit the configuration files. And what's really unique about this one is that it makes beautiful use of the white, red, and black colors offered by the Tricolor WaveShare 2.7 inch e-ink display hat available for the Raspberry Pi. It just, it's it's beautiful because it uh, has the red and black lettering on the white background. And it's so nice to just have white as a color on a screen, <laughs> definitely. And this dashboard displays date info, weather info, internet speed, and even uh, COVID-19 info in a visually, very visually appealing way. And I actually uh, have already uh, purpose Pur- purchased Purpose. this uh, e-ink. <laughs> Purpose. <laughs> See, I'm tired too. <laughs> I've already purchased this WaveShare e-ink display. I, I I bought it yesterday for my Raspberry Pi so I could play with this project because it's really, really beautifully done. And I'm looking forward to modifying it and maybe adding some some new monitors to it like CPU usage and whatnot. So. Yeah. Pedro, help me, actually out. Haven't help, help me out, Pedro. I'm looking at this and we were looking at an image which looks, you know, there's a monitor stand behind it. There's some dice. There's a little Anakin back there. Something yeah. about this Eek. display with the ras- a full size ras- it, the proportions look off. You're like, is that a really small <laughs> Raspberry Pi or a really big display? <laughs> no, yeah. that's a, what looks it's to like be a-, a Raspberry Pi B series, be it a four or a three, they're all about <laughs> that size. Yeah. So yeah, no, that that hat is very much designed to fit squarely on top of the uh, typical Raspberry Pi design and the screw holes line up. So mm-hmm. you always have a place to mount it. It's even yes. got button keys on the left side to make them do things yes. like keys do. Well, <laughs> well, I love also the little icons. I mean, it's got the sun icon and the little COVID. That's all it takes to sell Jill. Jill's like, oh, <laughs> yeah. ee, that's nice. For, oh, icons. <laughs> Shiny. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> I just think they're so beautiful. It's beautifully laid out in a really nice font. They they uh, chose a nice font for that. So pretty decent. Well, having that uh, on say uh, that uh, thing you were talking about before the show, Ven, to have a display for your. Um, See, I have an opposite problem. I don't remember mount. what I was talking about before the show. <laughs> the oh. uh, touch displays for your rack mounts, e ink yeah. uses a lot less power. They uh-huh. refresh very slowly. You probably just need to add a capacitive touch See, layer yeah, on top I, of it. I, I, yeah, <laughs> you, I, I like how you just casually sprinkle the like times one thousand difficulty multiplier at the end of the sentence. Like, oh yeah, yeah. you need to they do probably, it. They probably they probably sell touch things, <laughs> touch e-ink thing. displays. <laughs> e-ink gets stuff done. Beautiful people. Uh, we got to get out of here. We're running over time. But if you want to get in touch with us, uh, Pedro, contact. How do you do it? Contact at SolidixGameCast.com. There's a contact button which gives you a contact form. How does that work? Make sure you pick LWDW as the show that you want to send your feedback to. Otherwise, we may be inclined to misinterpret it as some hate mail. For Got some that of that. Ring, ring. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Y'all uh, had no feedback. Stay tuned. <laughs> um, Saturday, because uh, we, it's been a while since we've had a Kickstarter project that 
wants to like have a retroactive um, NDA for sending us this information. They're like, hey, we're just going to come out and send you the information. By the way, that's under NDA that you clearly didn't sign. And, oh, yeah, it's for Kickstarter. It's not. Oh, and it's Windows only. Hmm. Oh, we're we're going to have some fun. <laughs> yeah. Saturday. Stay tuned okay. for that. It's a wall of shame. Candidate, but beautiful people. We got to <laughs> bounce out of here. We're going to roll some credits and thank those people who make the but show possible. Yeah. Aww, <laughs> we love all our patrons and our new, newest patron, Vigilant Viking. <laughs> thank you so much. Oh, the wall of shame is time honored tradition. <laughs> yes. We just haven't had to use it in five or six it, it's, years. Uh, it's been a while, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yay! Visual and Viking is an advisor. Woo. It's amazing. <laughs> woo 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 woo! <laughs> and our executive producers, you know, we love you all. If you did a little bit of the uh, methamphetamines, you could be a hypervisor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I get an internet point for that. Yes, you do. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, LWW 243, 243, not 342, 243. I'm glad I'm not OCD. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it is challenging at times. <laughs> it really comes through in the recording. You can hear the misalignment. <laughs> <laughs> Don <Dawn> him. <laughs> Energy. <laughs> I don't know where I'm at on this shirt yet. Yeah, I love it. I think it looks nice on you, Ben. Yeah, you like dorky shit like this, though. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I like stuff like that. <laughs> oh, speaking of GNOME updates, the uh, GNOME platform flat pack also has an update. <laughs> and GCC... Oh! Getting an update for GCC 10. Okay, all right. That's one of the reasons, um, well, I, I, it's one of the reasons I'm glad I back Ardor, Ardor, um, <laughs> because the new version Ardor. is compiled Ardor. against GCC Ardor. 10. Ardor. Well, it's Ardor, according to the, um, yeah, guy who created it. I have heard that. I, I'm just not used to, I'm just so used to saying I call Ardor. It Ardor yeah. because, uh, in German, Ardor is a completely different, um, mm. thing. <laughs> <laughs> also, the way it's spelled, yeah, it's hard. Yeah, also the big honking you <laughs> yeah. in it. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> it's like the creator of GIFs pronounces it GIF. That's why he's a programmer and not a linguist. Listen, man, I like going to the zoo and seeing the giraffe. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, no, no. We're not the swapping giraffe. graphics. We're not inter interchanging graphics. No, 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 no. We're interchanging giraffes. Then we have gnome. And gyrocopters. Gnome. Gnome. Built from the ground up using giraffe technology. Hush, you're giving away the secrets. <laughs> if it's a desktop manager, it's gnome. If it's the little guy in the bushes by your house, it's gnome. <laughs> that is extremely Too stereotyping. Too easy. <laughs> <laughs> so they only stand around in shrubs behind your house. Yep. They can't stand in shrubs. No, listen, in front man, of your house. listen. That's what Jill calls the people out there that are doing that. They're gnomes. <laughs> Those are called stalkers. No, no, gnomes, Pedro. You monster. We're trying to make everything negative. They're gnomes. We gotta get out of here. The gnomes will get us. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. not I, I'm You managed to word to that, that a lot better than I ah. did, Mir. <laughs> I 
I don't know. The um, mm. see, what I want to create is like a 19 inch. Like to you, that would be multiple, multiple panels. Because you guess nice. what? They have custom LCD glass cut just for this, and it starts at twenty four hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it would be cheaper to <laughs> buy an AIO and take the screen out of it and mount it. <laughs> yeah, another good use of an e ink display, a, a real large one, would be for doing show notes. I think that would be great. And, and uh, portrait on the side here, I love that. Having them to easy to read. Know. Yeah. Yeah, easy to read if you're uh, in a room that's, you know, lit up like yours. Yeah. Yeah, well, it could be backlit. Yeah, you can get the backlit ones. My, <laughs> because uh, that completely Kindles negates or... the advantage of having the uh-huh. display. But... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can backlight it just a little bit. <laughs> no, you can just bring a flashlight in with you. When you read it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Full on Game Boy. I <laughs> remember the with flashlight the old... in your mouth. <laughs> 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 With the the older Kindles, they you know they had all those little accessories you could buy for it, you know the lights and everything <laughs> for that reason. <laughs> but that was one of my favorite things to play with. I've had fun hacking with my older Kindle, and I put mm. Debian on it and did all kinds of things. I played YouTube on it, <laughs> to, and I tweaked it to try and get the best because the you know the frame rate of course. Oh yeah, everyone's slow. seen like the video of like, oh look, yeah. <laughs> here's like the dog poo. <laughs> it's like I can technically do it. Thunderbolt three would re- require me having Intel <laughs> processors, which I don't. Mm-hmm. Uh, if the USB Type C port has a little Display Port logo on it you can do daisy chitting yeah from that. no he said thunderbolt 3 though <laughs> yeah Mir, those are <laughs> yes oh. thunderbolt supports that if it matches the spec but USB-C doesn't help my internet argument 3.4. pedro <laughs> yeah look at how expensive that e-ink display is that's the thing is all the big ones are really expensive it's one thousand <laughs> that one hundred and forty nine no. dollars <laughs> <laughs> Oh my, yeah. See, Pedro, you were incorrect, whatever PD is. Mm. I know the one on my NVIDIA 2060 can do display. <laughs> no, I was talking about the DisplayPort logo, not the, th- the actual Thunderbolt. I'm talking about the uh. DisplayPort logo that you see above the Type-C connectors. Inertia. <laughs> oh. I have a laptop. I have a... There's a Type-C port. I right hear. <laughs> what are we looking oh, yeah. at? If the camera focused, which it doesn't look like it wants to. See that Type-C port there? That's uh-huh. a display oh, yeah. port logo. Oh, I'll I see. I'll take a picture and I'll put it on Discord. <laughs> I would if I could find my phone. It's a problem, Pedro. You you don't have a 2004 um, camera digital like on your desk like I do that I can plug in with that. Remember that dumb USB, um, the USB wings? Uh, yeah. What was it? The USB mini? Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> I don't remember what it was called. <laughs> it, it, yeah, it's just got unnecessary indentions on both sides of the cable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have that one cable. Mini B. Yeah, yes. <laughs> I have one of those as well. For an older monitor. Where's my phone? Pedro's I don't find phone. my phone. Now, I, see, I would text myself from Gmail, but I'm not Pedro. I'm pretty sure it's in the bedroom. <laughs> Nor is just going through it, man. It's like, what's up? I got nothing to hide. <laughs> I know, it, it's depressing. She's just like, oh, no yeah. one wants them either. <laughs> not even a little bit. I am one boring as human being <laughs> what oh <Aww>, pedro <laughs> i am <Not> true. <laughs> yeah katie can act i'll just be pinging it <laughs> yeah no it's in the bedroom because it's not here so yeah. <laughs> what what type of monster are you you don't have your mobile within reach 
I forget my phone at home all the time because one calls me. Oh. <laughs> I don't take mine with well, me. My mom calls me once a week ish. <laughs> you want to get some weird stares, man? You're like, I don't, know I'm like, I don't have a mobile yeah. device. It's like it's in the boot of my car. Which <laughs> you want to go walk and go get it? We can, but oh. <laughs> I just don't like carrying around a little noise device. It has nothing to do. I, I gladly wear like a GPS tracker. If it's, it's like, I don't care about that. This is sometimes you need mm. to take a break. That's a good thing to do when driving and when you're not in the house. Yes. Or if you're Pedro and you just try to forget it, and you're like, ah. Oh. <laughs> I'm trying to see if there's a picture of that laptop with that port. Hey, on hey there's one person that still cares. Let's see. for ninety USB C. See, this yeah. is the thing with USB-C. Um, the way you find out what type it is, is you keep plugging in cables, and then once you've cycled through all of your cables and you don't <laughs> yeah. get the desired effect, it doesn't do that thing. Now, with the next USB-C device, you do the same thing. And if one works, mm -hmm. you know, hey. You got to admit, though, man, motherboard manufacturers, you just put that thing on the back <laughs> to break, don't you? <laughs> On the front panel, yeah, put the header so that people can plug yeah, it if yeah, they get yeah, a kiss yeah. with the USB-C connector, but... The one, the one that's soldered into mm. the motherboard, I, I've probably, on <laughs> both of these too, man, like I've plugged a thing into it just and left it. So no. yeah, it's a little spotty. Because <laughs> the cases usually have like a whole plastic shroud around that plug, so yeah. <laughs> I'll get it. Like, yeah, sometimes they have the little uh, um, rubber door that hangs down, and then you have to push it in. <laughs> I've seen that, too. Well, you only need one USB. I have two USB-C ports. Because my video card has one. That's a good thing about that. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you only get the one Type-C port, too. <laughs> <laughs> so even though we have we have moved away from the duck build design for newer USB, it still has issues. <laughs> Don't worry, Jill. USB 4 is going to solve everything. <laughs> yeah. When it comes out in 2026. <laughs> if the planet's still around by... Well, the planet will probably still be around by then. Uh, we might not. Um, nothing, nothing. <laughs> can't get that right. Nothing's going to happen to the planet. It can't sort out. We just might not be on it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's like the Earth will still be here. Humanity, on the other hand. Yeah. <laughs> it's like we can destroy. I'm like, let me tell you about a little thing called the KT boundary and how that got there. <laughs> when you burn off the surface in the atmosphere, there was like, eh. Rocket ships. That's what we need. <laughs> Everyone needs a rocket ship. <laughs> a rocket ship 2020. <laughs> I'm on team. Let's see if we can come up with something better than chemical propulsion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would be nice. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> we have, you know, this huge star that's just showering us with skin cancer. Um, we have a massive planet below us with a massive magnetic field. Can we not do anything? Utilize that. Nope. I know. I want a solar car. I don't want a hybrid, you know, because you're still, you're still using energy and fossil fuels and, you know, something's got to power those electric cars. I want solar. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, 
seems like I a mean, no brainer. I going to point out that that still uses energy, but <laughs> no, I was going yeah, to tell you it's... how many laws of physics that would violate. But um, <laughs> you can still want something. That's not a problem. I might want a dragon, man. I can still want it. Oh, I'd like a dragon. <laughs> a fire burning dragon. <laughs> I'd be okay with a wyvern at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I get you an MSI motherboard. They got little dragons on them. <laughs> oh yes, they do. <laughs> yeah, my my MSI 1080 uh, 1050 Ti has little dragons on it. It's got mm -hmm. two of them. <laughs> Twin Froza. <laughs> two. <of them. laughs> Aww. Aww, I love that dragon. Yes. And I love the luck dragon from Never Ending Story as well. Oh yeah, they've made cars uh, that no, are the, 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 see, technically the problem, solar the I hate when these are brought up because if you ran into that with your bicycle, it would rip it in half. Yeah, they have to be very, very light. Not motorcycle, bicycle. Yeah. And that's why they've been having the solar challenges for three decades and nothing's come from it because... Yes. <laughs> the moment you put any kind of structural uh, structural rigidity to it, it nope. d d no. <laughs> too much mass, can't do it. <laughs> but, you know, um, photovoltaic, uh, the efficiency of solar cells has what um. Yeah, it is be much better now. The Someone's got to crack that issue. Yeah, but it's called nuclear. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's that too. <laughs> But, you know, first it was Chernobyl, then it was Fukushima. Three Mile Island, man. That was the one that blew up here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not really. And they I shut mean... down the uh, Portuguese nuclear power plant after the Fukushima incident. It was already uh... on, on life support. <laughs> well, It's like, technically, the one core that it had was self-sustaining. You can, you can but understand these. That's like, it. <laughs> yeah. The Fukushima, I was genuinely impressed by because you're talking about like 40 year old nuclear tech and like, and it stood up to that. Mm. Yeah. The earthquakes well, and waves. Three of the cores didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, the fact that it just didn't, um, yeah, fusion isn't, uh, yeah, yeah. they're, they're going to light up, uh, an experimental reactor very soon. I think for the end of 2020, we might get like meteor plus, um, <laughs> meteor plus fallout okay yeah, we get a little you. dlc for the meteor man, man. oh it's the unreleased dlc for fallout 4 meteor yep. uh, you got sodium you have a thorium liquid salt reactors uh they built one of those the government did uh the united states government had one running for like 20 years and i mean they work it's viable it's doable but i don't know there's a lot of there's a big stigma around nuclear unfortunately because yeah thorium reactors that would have been a pretty good idea well, let's just do that you, you can't make <laughs> nuclear grade fuel from thorium no depleted uranium or no, gtfo no, baby you can't. <laughs> mm. <laughs> you can't make arsenal yeah, i can't make thorium. weapons from that get that stuff out of here <laughs> you mean when that core goes critical it was just like turn into like a solid and chill out not do anything ah yeah that's the other one it's like oh yeah thorium <laughs> in 2019 yeah renewable is that that's the way to rock and roll man i mean we've definitely seen the reduction of um what was it, like 20 something percent over the past five years or something with coal fired plants and stuff like that i think we'll, 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 there'll be enough people around to say hey we got to figure it out uh when we do mm -hmm. eventually yeah <laughs> eventually eventually <laughs> also uh daisy i got what you meant there. <laughs> uh we're both headed to the exact same layer of hell <laughs> if it turns out it does exist <laughs> i don't know it depends on what the uh, steel pipes were filled with <laughs> i i have my games to continue these conversations with certain people <laughs> <laughs> Dead feel again, Mel Seal names. <laughs> All right, uh, beautiful people. We got a bounce. It's already oh four nineteen. All right, yep. So, um, yeah. Let's see. What do I get? Uh, I don't think I have anything in the mail heading this way. 
there wasn't a like a second gen of Poogie that I was uh, thinking about getting, but I, I burned all my money on this Raspberry Pi experiment, so mm. I'm just gonna have to <laughs> wait. You're safe with Poogie. Um, <laughs> I made the one uh, offer on eBay this week, which was um, after Arthurin posted the link to that person who's working on uh, getting the kernel or getting the Ouya supported by the kernel. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. I went on eBay. It's like, okay, so how much does an Ouya go for? And I went for the completed things because that's the first thing I do. Mm -hmm. 20 pounds. All right. I'll pay 20 pounds for an Ouya with a controller. All right. Yeah, uh, I the still ones have for my sale, original 40. One. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so there was one that had the best offers open. It's like everyone else, uh, all the ones that have sold anyway, uh, has been going for twenty pounds. So I'm I'm offering you twenty pounds right now. And he came back. No, I know what I got. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. No loans. Yeah, I still have my original <laughs> Ouya, and I got Debian on it. Be like, hey man, you got <laughs> the thing that people can't give away. <laughs> Um. <laughs> yeah, I bought it in like Toys R Us or something. <laughs> so, oh, the Oya is very much day. dead. Some people are like, "Hey, man, I want like uh, I want all the power, number crunching ability of like a seven year old mobile phone." Um, yeah, uh, actually, Arthurian, you're right. That's I was thinking of uh, testing Steam OS on it. I'm sure it'd be just fine. <laughs> so for that. <sighs> <laughs> Not actual no. SteamOS, the, the like Raspbian well, the, or any of the, the ARM uh, distros, uh, Steam and then Steam loading. Link. Yeah, yeah, using Steam it Link as a, not SteamOS. Yes. Yeah, Steam Link. Yeah. I mean, I... The Oya was an interesting, interesting thing. Um, we were talking about that Saturday, you know, comparing the Oya to like but the Atari Debian VCS it, so. is going to be. Uh, the what? The Atari VCS. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's supposed supposedly the Ryzen embedded uh, fifteen oh eight or whatever it is, which has got like a Vega two uh, integrated. It, it, it can technically run Borderlands. We don't know if that was streaming yet. <laughs> oh, uh, going by the frame rate, I'm going to say it was running on the hardware. <laughs> yeah, no, it was pretty yeah. jack. That yeah, that, that's. <laughs> Probably like uh, 720p. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah, Cody the Dragon Root, you're um, exactly right. That's why, even though it only has one one gig of RAM, it, it it did very well with the games because of that NVIDIA graphics rendering and the API that was uh, enhanced for it. Tegrity Farms. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's the same one as the, the Shield. Yeah, the same SOC as this, Tegra K1. <laughs> Next week, I'll get my Ouya out to show you. <laughs> I've got the box right over there. <laughs> Very beautiful people. Um, have you already fed this evening, Pedro? I have not. Oh. And so I must eat. <laughs> 9.30. Yeah, that's a good time. <laughs> Probably a good time. Yeah. All right. I'll have an early lunch. Steve, what are you bringing over for dinner? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, Jill's hungry. Yeah, I'm just gonna say, you don't want Jill to starve. <laughs> Nvidia Shield. Yeah, and Nvidia Shield's like an uh, Ouya, but usable and portable and with a touchscreen. Yeah. And it's a, actually a very decent tablet. It's a bit slow nowadays. But... Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, my first device with a Tegra was the Boxy Box. I still have that too. That's a little more powerful than the Ouya. <laughs> uh, it was a tablet. Uh, my yeah. first Tegra was a tablet, the Tegra 3 for the Asus Transformer TF300T. I don't have a Tegra. <laughs> I've uh, reduced the um, the original Google Nexus 10, which I paid the iron price for, and it still bugs me. That thing was like $560. Mm -hmm. You know what it does these days? <laughs> it's a touch screen. It controls my light bulbs, Pedro. <laughs> That's even worse. It's a light switch. <laughs> it makes with the RGB, so I can be like... <clears throat> you can go extra pank. <laughs> That's it. 
That's what it does <laughs> that, with its with its two point one k display. <laughs> That's a really pricey light switch. <laughs> it is. It was. I don't think they're worth anything. They better not be any worth anything. Don't. I guess the the good ish quality no scratched one um, probably. 200-ish pounds? <laughs> it better not be. They better be like four bucks. Because, uh, well, I know why. The Nexus 5s, because every single uh, open source project out there supports the Nexus 5. Didn't you hear Those Arthur and the devil went down to Georgia? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nexus 5 is uh, Steve's phone. <laughs> yeah. Those still go for like 50 bucks? Yeah, they're good phones Easy. and they have a good camera on them. <laughs> the main reason this thing stays alive and charged is A, I replaced the battery in it just out of curiosity uh, when I did. B, it's got a 9,000 milliamp battery in it. Mm. That's a portable bricks, what that is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can charge things off that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, there's no, that. This was only uh, 3,800. But then again, it was just a 1920 by 1200 screen, and it's eight inches, so. Yeah. I didn't even know until like three or four years, but I was like, hey, man, this tablet will genuinely make it two days and some change, like real use, too. Not like, oh, I have it at 10% brightness uh, looking mm -hmm. at a web page. Like, no, just like playing YouTube in the background, because you just forget to plug it in. You're like, oh, you're still going. All right. Okay. Uh, watch out for the power buttons. They apparently fail. And, uh. That's the thing. Be careful, Steve, wherever you're at. Aww. We miss you, buddy. <laughs> Thank Hope you, you make it home one day. Advice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. Uh, we're out of here. And um, I'll be back tomorrow with Jordan. We'll probably uh, be racing uh, the clock with the children. No. That was an interesting ah. way to describe who's your dad. Yeah. But okay. And what does he do? <laughs> Do <laughs> 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 <laughs>